In the last video, we went through and explained all the basic derivative rules, but we didn't really have time to go through a lot of examples. So in this video, we're not going to explain too much about why the derivative rules are what they are, but instead we're just going to hop right into a bunch of examples. So first, just a quick rundown of what those rules were, um, just so we remember them before we begin. And the constant rule said that if you differentiate a constant, uh, just a simple numerical value, the shortcut is that this will always be zero, as long as it's just a constant and it doesn't have a variable expression in it. The constant multiple rule said that if you have any constant times a generic function like 5 sine x or 2x squared or something like that, then the constant can just stay. I like to call it a tag-along constant, and you just differentiate the function. So this would be c times f prime of x. The power rule is a rule we use all the time. And the pattern for this one, the shortcut for this term, is that the n comes out of the exponent and becomes the coefficient. And you have x raised to the n minus 1. You have to subtract 1 from whatever that exponent is, uh, whether it be an integer or a fraction. The sum and difference rule says that if you're differentiating the sum or difference of two separate terms or two separate functions, you're allowed just to differentiate the first function and add that to the derivative of the second function. A few trig derivatives, there are others, but we're not going to file these under the basic derivative rules, but just the derivatives of sine and cosine only. Uh, the derivative for sine was cosine x. And the derivative for cosine x was negative sine x. So negative sine x for the derivative of cosine. And cosine x for the derivative of sine. So those are what we call their, our basic rules. So let's, um, let's just try a few examples here. We're going to start with some real simple ones and then just kind of build up from there. So if here's a function f of x equals 3x to the fifth plus x squared minus 7. We can follow these rules, and I might might try to flip back and forth uh, a little bit the best I can. So for this term here, well, bef before I even do that, let me back up. I see sums and differences, which the sum and difference rule says I can differentiate this term and this term and this term all separately and then combine all their individual derivatives together. All right, so let's let's try that. All right, the derivative of the first term will have a little bit of the constant multiple rule because it's 3 times x to the fifth. So that rule says take the 3, put it in your pocket, and we'll differentiate x to the fifth, which will give us 5x to the fourth by the power rule. So this will be 3 times 5x to the fourth. And then sum and difference rule says we can add the derivative of x squared, so we bring the 2 down. It has no coefficient, or its coefficient is 1. So it would be 2x to the 2 minus 1, so it would be 2x to the first. And then minus the derivative of 7, which would be 0, because it's a constant. Now make sure you label this as f prime of x. A lot of my students will have uh, the mistake of keeping this f or just writing equals, equals, but obviously this is not the same as the original function. This is a new function. It's the derivative. Now, whenever you have the constant multiple rule, we should also clean that up a little bit. So our final answer for this one would be 3 times 5 is 15x to the fourth plus 2x. Now, the more of these that you do, you'll be able to basically skip this middle step and just treat it as the power coming down and immediately multiplying times the coefficient, because that's really what's happening. Um, we just have to make sure we keep all these rules in our, straight in our head. All right, here's uh, another one that's a, a slightly more difficult, but, but still not too bad. If here's y, then we'll say dy dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, it's another notation for derivative, would be 5 times the three halves will come down, x to the three halves minus one. We have to take one away from that exponent, All right? And then minus, uh, now this guy right here is not immediately um, 
matching any of my basic derivative rules. So what we might need to do, and this is a, a common thing, I'm going to go back up to the original expression. So this is not, it doesn't have anything to do with the derivative. I might need to rewrite this so that it fits one of the rules above, because right this second, it doesn't fit any of these basic rules right here. All right, but um, 1 over x uh, square root of x, 1 over root x would be the same as x to the minus 1 half. So uh, a well-known algebra technique that if you have a power of like a half, in this case, in the denominator, you can move that expression up to the numerator if you make the exponent negative. All right, so that fits the power rule. So I'll bring the negative one half down, x to the negative one half minus one. So it's going to go deeper into the negatives. Let's clean that up a little bit. Typo. Sorry about that. Uh, clean that up a little bit. dy dx equals 15 over 2. That's 5 times 3 over 2. 15 over 2 x to the one half, that's three halves minus one. So I could say square root of x or x to the one half. Uh, minus a negative makes a plus. One over, here's a two. And this will be x to the negative three halves, negative one half minus one, negative three halves. So I'll move that down to the denominator and write it as x to the positive three halves. So you can either write this term in radical notation, or we'll just leave it as a rational exponent. All right, um, another thing we have to get comfortable with, and I changed something up in this example, the variable doesn't always have to be x. It can be t or theta. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, the letter is. Um, so in this case, we'll be differentiating g with respect to t. So you might have g prime of t would be equal to what? Um, this one on the surface doesn't seem to fit any of our basic rules uh, because if you saw the end of the basic derivative rules video, at the end I explained what we did not currently have rules for. And one of these that I'm missing is what happens when you have a fraction. So um, on the surface, it doesn't look like we'll be able to differentiate this with one of our basic rules. Now, there is something called the quotient rule, but it turns out that's not even needed here if we have a fraction like this. Um, a common technique is to rewrite this if you have a just a constant in the denominator as something like one-fifth. See, here's a, a understood one. One-fifth times cosine t and kind of pull the function of t off the numerator and set it to the side. And these are the same. No derivatives. This, this, these are the exact same. Well, that makes it much more clear because that's a constant multiple of cosine. So I'll hang on to the one-fifth. I'll differentiate the cosine t, and I'll get negative sine t. And you can either leave it like that, or we can write negative sine t over 5 negative sine t over 5. Okay, for our last example, we've got a, a big fraction here, and this is another common example. I tried to pull out examples that, that are likely to show up on homework and test type questions, but we have this big fraction. Again, we don't need any derivative rules that would be used typically for rational functions uh, because this one's a, a, a unique type of fraction. Whenever you have a function divided by a monomial, that's a single term like 2x, you can use algebra and simply break this apart into three separate pieces before we differentiate. Uh, again, I, I've said this before, but one of the main things we have to be good at when taking derivatives is rewriting ugly functions to match some of the limited rules that we have for derivatives. So if you break this up into three pieces, you'd get 9 halves, that's 9 over 2, x to the fifth, and the rule I'm using here is if you have x to the sixth divided by x to the first, you subtract the exponents, it's an algebra property, so six minus one is five, All right? and then minus four over two is two, x to the second, that's three minus one, plus two over, uh, eight over two, which is four, x to the, okay, we gotta do a little bit with fractions here, uh, five halves minus one, so 5 halves minus 
two halves, that's one, will give you th three halves. So four x to the three halves. All right now that's just f. Keep in mind that is not a derivative yet. I just rewrote it. Well now it, it's a lot easier to take the derivative this time. So f prime of x would be, let's see, bring that five down, you get 45 halves x to the fourth. That's five times nine minus four x plus four times three halves x to the three halves minus one would be one half. Now the coefficient four times three halves, see the four and the two cancel, and so you get two times three, which would be six x to the one half. So you can either leave that as x to the one half, uh, or we could write that as the square root of x, you know, either way. So anyway, that's, that's how we use some of these basic derivative rules. If your function doesn't exactly match one of those uh, basic rules, it's not a big deal. Just go back and rewrite it to where it does fit some of these basic rules, and then you should be able to do it. Now there's other rules that are applicable in other types of functions. If you have products or quotients, or a composition with layers of functions where the basic rules don't apply. But we'll do some more of those examples in a later video.